Have you ever watched a crime show or a movie featuring on some sort of criminal plot twist to it and wondered how much of this would actually fly in the eyes of the law and how much of what's going on would be authentic in the legal landscape? in terms of the police involved, the detectives and special forces involved, and of course, the culprits themselves. Well, in today's video, I thought we would take a fun little break from just all the legal agreements and all the law school survival and thrival tips that we put out here at Graphene Business Law and talk about Adam Sandler's latest Netflix crime movie, Murder Mystery. Too. So if you'd like to hear more about what a lawyer actually thinks about some of what went on in this movie, then please keep on watching. And of course, if you're new to our channel, give this video a thumbs up and click on the red subscribe button down below. Here at Graphene Business Law, we regularly post content that's most relevant to business owners and entrepreneurs. We also have a little series on law school and how to get through law school in the best way possible. And once in a while, I put out these pop culture videos when I watch something myself that I can't help but comment on, or when I watch something that I think would be really interesting for a lot of people. My name is Pam Matani. I'm the principal lawyer here at Graphene Business Law, where we serve clients virtually throughout Ontario, Canada. And um, as our slogan goes, we're all business all the time. Okay. So, Murder Mystery 2. For those of you that haven't already watched the film, you can, you know, click and choose or pick and choose what parts of this video you'd like to watch because, of course, it's laden with spoiler alerts. And um, for those of you that have watched the film, you'll know it's one of the latest, or if not the latest, Adam Sandler movie to come out. It came out, I believe, on Netflix. It features him as the main star and Jennifer Aniston. The movie is, of course, the murder mystery 2 tells us that it's a sequel and it is in fact a sequel to the 2019 murder mystery film with Jen Aniston and Adam Sandler. Before I even start, there is like zero commentary in this review about acting skills or things like that or the people involved. I mean, I think Adam Sandler, I don't want to say I watch his movies literally on the first day they come out. but I've never waited more than a week to watch an Adam Sandler movie. Like he's pretty high up there on my list, which I know I um, not everybody agrees with that opinion. I'm not exactly watching for movies with such a stressful career and stressful life with all of my endeavors. I don't exactly watch a movie to like be stumped by it and be thrilled and you know. So Adam Sandler movies are really safe movies for me. They're predictable, they're kind of funny, and it's just, you know, a good time. And Jan Aniston, of course, she's a great actress. I mean, I think she solidified herself in Hollywood, barring, you know, any scandals coming out over the rest of her, her hopefully long and happy life. I think Jan Aniston is at a really good spot with Hollywood. So the two together, as far as talent goes, and as far as, you know, weight, celebrity weight goes, it's a hard combo to beat, in my opinion. So, you know I already like the cast, and of course I like the movie is set in some super like luxury, decadent, exotic places. It's visually a gorgeous film, and that goes a really long way for me as well, as a viewer, not as a lawyer necessarily, but as a viewer, because I wanna watch something beautiful after you know after i log off for work for you know my three minutes of, of break time a day i want to watch something that's just beautiful to look at and this movie certainly certainly hits that mark with gorgeous scenery both in nature and you know they're on some exotic islands and then they go to paris so i think they check all the boxes from a visuals perspective and gorgeous outfits and clothes and all of that Okay, that being said, you know, putting my lawyer hat back on and a further disclaimer, I guess, being that I'm not a criminal lawyer, graphene business law. You can probably guess from our very name of our firm what kind of law we practice. It's business law, anything having to do with launching or growing your business. So I'm not a criminal lawyer, 
but I'm still a lawyer. I still had to learn criminal law going through law school in order to graduate law school. And I do have plenty of colleagues that do practice criminal law. And um, I thought I'd give my two cents on what I found to be some really funny discrepancies or weird things in this movie, okay? So again, spoiler alert throughout this video. The movie kind of starts out with Jen and Adam, I, I don't remember their movie names, so we're going to keep them their real names. Jen and Adam starting out in their like home life in the US. They're kind of struggling to get their detective business off the ground. And then they get invited to this wedding by one of their friends. He is, his name, I remember in the movie, is the Maharaja. And, you know, the Maharaja is all about you know, having a good time and super like bombastic and luxurious and just you know it's the fun is popping all over the place and they get flown to this remote island and on the night of his wedding the maharaja gets kidnapped and then the lights sort of go out and the maharaja's i think he's literally just a bodyguard he says um you know when they find out he's been kidnapped he says shut down the entire island nobody gets in or out keeping in mind first of all i i don't think it's explained or disclaimed in the movie what island they're on so i can't speak to the legal system of the exact jurisdiction they're located in for the purposes of this crime scene and um, for the purposes of this crime scene but an individual's bodyguard has literally no authority over anybody else a bodyguard is an employee. You can hire a bodyguard. I can hire a bodyguard to stand in the back of my next video. It doesn't mean that you need to listen to anything that he says, he or she says. Okay? Or they say. You don't need to listen to anything that someone else's bodyguard says. And then here this bodyguard is goes shutting down the entire island. Of course, another detective comes into the scene and he comes in the most, you know, Kind of strange way possible they submerge out of the water and onto land um, they've kind of you know i don't know how they got in the water they don't show that part but we know that they rise up onto the island and the detective also echoes the bodyguard's message of shut the island down neither of these professional characters private detective and private bodyguard have any authority over anybody else on that island or anywhere in the world for that matter Yet in the movie, we see that the persons in the movie listen to them and they go to their hotel rooms. Keep in mind, we're still in the setting of the Maharaja's wedding and they go into their hotel rooms and, um, you know, they take this order seriously. Although we see a few characters are sneaking out and we eventually end up having like this meeting of people in Adam Sandler and Jen Aniston's uh, hotel room. I know their last name was Spitz. I don't remember their first names in the movie. So that's why I keep calling them by their real first names. Okay. After being uh, somehow quarantined, which is a word we've all come to know the definition of during multiple COVID years, after this quarantine on, on the island, then the next thing we see is that these individuals who all become murder suspects in the movie, or, or at this point, still kidnapping slash murder suspects because they don't know if the Maharaja has been killed yet, then all of these people are flown in the height of luxury to Paris, France. If this was a real murder scene, I assure you no one's getting you a first class ticket anywhere in the world, but I, I don't know that you'd be able to leave the jurisdiction you're in anyways if you're genuinely suspected of murder or kidnapping. Either of those charges I think are sufficiently serious that trying to leave the jurisdiction you're located in, if caught, would certainly pose itself as, as a flight risk as you trying to run away from the authorities. But somehow we end up in France, okay? In France, it's made very clear that Adam Sandler and Jan Aniston's character are suspects. The detective, remember that detective that submerges from the water like an Aquaman? He puts together the theory to get people off of his scent that Adam and Jen came to kidnap and maybe murder the Maharaja because remember they have their own detective business in the US that wasn't doing so well and he puts together the theory that they've kidnapped him for ransom which is an amount of money that they want 
in order for him to be released safely, you know, back into his fiance and family and what have you. So we see on the news that Adam and Jen are wanted criminals, and yet they have this private chat at the opera with a detective that they knew from the first movie, and it's actually not just a collegial detective, but the very detective that's on this case supposed to be out to catch them. They end up having a casual conversation with him. He gives them the, car, the keys to his car and they take his car and start driving throughout France for clues as to how to get the Maharaja back. And they've got this huge sum of money in their hands by this point because whoever did kidnap him asked for a ransom of, I believe, $50 million first and then it goes up to $70 million. Okay, goes without saying, you know, just by the fact that I'm mentioning it, yeah, I'm mentioning it as a trouble spot in the case that it would never fly with reality, that it goes without saying, a detective is not going to give you the keys to their car, they're not even gonna give you, you know, the pen they write with. Because if we're talking crime scene, murder scene, like the, these lines don't cross, you don't become besties with a detective and get to share rides across, you know, exotic countries. So that scene is a little weird as well. I think it would have been maybe more authentic. What we do see sometimes, unfortunately, is suspects trying to break out on their own. And maybe if Adam and Jen had like, stolen a car off the street or something like that, I don't think that they needed the detective's car because it just adds such a, a, a kink of not being believable to the film. But that being said, is it funny? Sure it is. Is it, you know, cool looking in parts? Sure, it can be, okay? And so not only does he give them the car, but he gives them, you know, carte blanche to roam free, right? Like they're trying to now take the case into their own hands and find the Maharaja themselves. In certain instances, depending on the jurisdiction you're in in the world, police forces can involve somebody that they believe is a culprit if that culprit holds further clues to the case. There can be collaboration, so to speak. I know we've all seen in the US films, you know, um, if you're giving information, you might get a lesser sentence. Sometimes, fact specific, do not take this as legal advice. Do not do something bad and then talk about it, hoping you'll get a lesser sentence. Do not do any of the things mentioned in this video because I'm literally saying how they were not supposed to be done in a movie to begin with, okay? Don't. But we see that the suspects are roaming free and that's another thing that wouldn't fly. I mean, having, especially in this case in the country of France, having lived in France myself for, for a period of time during times that actually there were some pretty well-known criminal cases that came out of that time. There were terrorist attacks, there were things like that. I mean, the whole country just goes on lockdown. So we're not, like, we're not letting people drive in the detective's car wherever they want to. Um, that's not how it works. And the last thing I'm gonna comment on, because I think this is so funny, whenever I see it in a movie, and there's just, like, it's a cool phrase to say, and that's when the detectives in a film, you know, they end up saying Interpol is on it. And that sounds cool. I, I think, you know, Interpol is one of those mystical creature type of organizations, especially perhaps to those of us in North America that have a little bit less dabbling with it. Same with an organization like NATO, for example. I think you hear that more in the everyday language of certain countries where NATO plays a much larger part within the systems of that nation or the daily systems, like you can see the boots on the ground in a country like Toronto, Canada. When I walk down the street, I don't see NATO forces. I don't see Interpol presence, you know, visibly to me. So it's it has a certain mystique when we hear those terms in films and i know that's why they put the line there in the movie because it has that appeal but interpol actually i don't know if most people know this interpol is not an organization that has the authority to arrest anybody okay interpol is like a supportive force okay so they can support other people looking to they can support other nations and I believe they have like 190, 195 member countries that have signed off to Interpol. Um, they can facilitate communications between these nations and their support mechanism. Interpol itself does not have its own law enforcement agents, okay? So when they say Interpol is on it in the movies, it's literally just a cool phrase. 
because Interpol being on it means nothing given that Interpol does not have authority to act. They can give out notices, for example, red notices with the case of the Maharaja. They didn't mention red notice in the movie, but as a lawyer and as someone that's researched and looked into this, I'm telling you, you know, a, a label for the murder, for example, would be a red notice on an individual. A label, you know, God forbid, for a, a young child missing would be, I believe, a yellow notice. So they have, they have systems in place to facilitate. But Interpol being on it, I think a lot of people get the sense that it's like a higher authority to whatever the arrest making body within a country is, that Interpol is like the mom and dad of, of the law, of the criminal law. This mom and dad can't do anything on its w without the member countries allowing it and welcoming it and working with it, okay? So I wanted to put that out there because I'm so tired of the movies going, Interpol is on it. Well, like, okay, then that means nothing. So, with all that out of the way, I did say at the beginning, although of course there's some, uh, there's some uh, spoilers in this video by virtue of the fact that I'm talking about very specific things that happen in the movie, I'm not going to comment on the whole plot and I think, you know what, I think I'm going to leave off what actually happened to the Maharaja so that you can go and watch the movie yourself and get that final ending for yourself. <coughs> excuse me but those were five or six things that I was watching the movie you know from the lens of a lawyer and it's like okay the public needs to know in case anybody's thinking of pulling anything that you know this is not how it works it might be funny in a movie it's not funny in real life don't do anything literally you see in the movie don't do anything you see in this review this is not legal advice this is a fun little review of what we saw in that film and a little bit of fact checking or education information if you will behind some of the things we see in the film and whether they're whether you'd find them in an authentic crime scene okay so i'll end the video there i hope you enjoyed this review i do put out the pop culture videos from time to time and um props to adam sandler for keeping the good times going oh, of course, Jen Aniston as, as literally the main star in it as well, but um, I'm excited to see the next Adam Sandler special and um, not that he'll ever watch this video, but if he does, rest assured, I'll see your next film literally within hours of it coming out, Adam. So thank you everybody for watching.